My name is Sexy Matt. In 2002, the Sony Corporation unleashed a virus upon the world. This virus is known as the Resident Evil movies. They unleashed a whole franchise of terrible action movies, which got worse and worse with each sequel. Yet somehow, grossed over $200 million and is currently the most successful video game movie franchise of all time. That's a real thing. Look it up. In 2012, we thought the virus was defeated. Unfortunately, it didn't stay dead. Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. It's time to talk about something I never thought I'd get to talk about. The Resident Evil movie franchise. With the new release, Resident Evil, the final chapter. So yes, we get another Resident Evil movie. We all thought it was long dead, but it's back, baby. And uh, what did I think of Resident Evil, the final chapter? Now, usually in my show around this point in a franchise movie, I give you my hierarchy of the previous movies, how I rank them, what I think of them. All the Resident Evil movies are terrible. I watched them proceeding up to this movie. Uh, they all have some good points, but overall, it's a really terrible franchise. And I have a weird fascination with the Resident Evil franchise, because we keep getting them, but nobody likes them, but they are making money. So it's kind of this interesting, like, how is this happening? Like, what's this weird Resident Evil vortex we're stuck in? But uh, that might be for another day. Today we're just talking about the final chapter. So the plot of uh, the final chapter is, uh, this takes place, they're very specific, 10 years after the uh, initial infection in Resident Evil, the first Resident Evil. So uh, that roughly places this movie in 2012. And man, I remember 2012. You guys remember? Oh, the world is, you know, just in disarray. Zombies everywhere. National monuments falling over. Just a few thousand people left in the world. That was a crazy weekend. But yes, ten years after Resident Evil, uh, we get the final chapter. So basically what it happens is the Red Queen from the first movie reaches out to Alice, Mila Jolovich's character, and says that there's only four to 5,000 people left on the Earth, and at their current rate of death, they will be all gone in 48 hours. But the Umbrella Corporation has an airborne antivirus, which she could release, that could save what's left of humanity. And she needs to go back to the hive from the first movie and retrieve said virus. And that is where we go with Resident Evil. Now usually, again, in my videos, I'll do a character breakdown of which characters and who played what. But we pretty much only get one character, and that's Alice, played by Mila Jolovich. Or Jolovich. And, um, it's the same Alice as the previous movies if you've seen any Resident Evil movies. Um, my main complaint with her character, and this is in every movie, and, and as well as this one, is she's good in other things, but in this one, her interpretation of badass is disinterest. That's, that's how she's a badass, is she's, my name is Alice. I worked for the Umbrella Corporation. Yep. Like, that's, what is that? And... I don't know if that's a direction issue or an acting issue, but that's she's just always so disinterested in these Resident Evil movies. And I feel like she cares about the franchise. She's definitely not hard to get back to do another one, but good lord, she does not... Uh, the character Alice does not seem to give a crap about anything. 
But there is some great action scenes with her. I don't know how much is a body double and CG and how much is actually her, but there is that as well. Um, we do get a couple big bads, and it's a team up of the bads from the previous movies. So one of the doctors, which I'll get into later, and then Wesker. If you remember Wesker, some people do. I do, because I watch them all. Wesker's dumb. So not much to talk about villains. They're evil for evil's sake. I don't, I don't know what else to say. So I guess the real villains, of course, are the zombies. And there's definitely giant hordes of zombies in that. Um, of course, you know, the zombie uh, franchise or the zombie craze is definitely dying down. Get it? Dying down. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting that they're still doing zombies when we're all tired of zombies. But there's giant hordes of zombies, and they look pretty awesome. Uh, we get a lot of the same uh, uh, staples of the previous Resident Evil movies. We get the zombie dogs, the laser hallway, and the uh, you know opening monologue, uh, which are the, kind of the real villains. You know, that damn laser hallway is everywhere. Um, and then, of course, we always get one unexplained uh, T-virus apparition, I guess you can call it. Uh, this one is these weird bat dragon things. We see them at the very end of Retribution. And uh, they come in to some effect in this one, but basically, as in all the previous Resident Evils, they show up for one really big scene. You might see them down the line doing something, but for the most part, there's this one big scene with this weird, unexplained T-virus aberration. It's uh, you know, an action set piece, and then they move on. And that's pretty much it for characters. There's not a lot of characters in this, which is something I'm going to get into later. But uh, there's not a lot of character for me to break down. So what worked well about Resident Evil The Final Chapter? First off, the first uh, third, or maybe the first half, has two or three incredible action scenes actually really fantastic um there's one on the roads with these tank things and it's kind of mad max-esque uh with some really cool stuff done and it's done very well um they use the camera to great effect it's a really awesome action scene as well as there's this other kind of almost dungeon siege style uh, action scene which again is done fantastic um they use you know kind of this uh, world where everything's so destroyed to really great effect and it's just really solid action scenes the action scenes later I'll talk about it later but the beginning action scenes in the first third to half hour I didn't really wasn't paying attention to the timing but the first two or three action scenes are really fantastic done really well and are quite enjoyable to be honest the other thing I liked about this movie is the overall aesthetic uh, the thing about Resident Evil movies is each one has its own style, for sure. Um, you definitely can tell which one you're watching by just seeing how it's filmed, the colorization, the set pieces, things like that. And this one's no exception. This one's got a really cool, like, Tron meets Mad Max style, where it's like tech noir in the apocalypse. And some really cool stuff out of that. A lot of grays, a lot of, you know, crap all over the place. Some interesting blues thrown in. Just the overall aesthetic of this looks great. It looks really good. Whoever was, you know, in charge of cinematography on this movie, you worked way too hard for a Resident Evil movie, but thank you. It was at least very pretty for me to look at, for sure. And I guess the final thing I can give it praise for is... We get some history behind the T-Virus and where it comes from, why it was developed, and that's kind of nice, and it's done in a very cool way that doesn't feel too intrusive in the movie. Um, it ties in well, and I think it's uh, a nice little uh, kind of addition to the Resident Evil continuity of where we got this T-Virus and why it's around. With those things being said, not every movie is perfect, and Resident Evil is far from perfect. What didn't work about Resident Evil The Final Chapter? Well, here's where I'm supposed to tell you it's not like the video games, but I'm pretty sure we're all aware of that. I personally have only played the first game, and nothing in these movies have come close to the storyline or characters or anything that happens in the first video game. 
So it's not like the games. I think we're all aware of this, and let's move on. So the rest of these are going to almost sound like nitpicks, a lot of them. But they start adding up. When you get so many nitpicks, it starts being major picks. Yeah, that's a thing. Anyway, so <clears throat> let's get into my uh, nitpicks all over. Why don't we? So if you're uh, familiar with the franchise, sometimes she has power, sometimes she doesn't. She loses them, she gains them. This one, it's you don't know if she has powers or not. They say at the end of Retribution that that actually didn't give her powers and she doesn't have the telekinesis. But she still seems to be jumping around and breaking things and has some sort of super strength, it seems, at least. Uh, so, is does she have powers? Does she not? It's not very well explained. It's just, she can do whatever it feels like. On top of her being seemingly unstoppable, uh, Alice gets knocked out and wakes up in a different area. Not once, not twice, but thrice! Three times she gets knocked out and wakes up in another area. But then she's unstoppable. But then that's, that's, that's this really lazy writing that they're just like, just do it, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's Resident Evil. Which again, maybe I'm looking too much into Resident Evil, but I couldn't help it. I, I gotta do this. Ugh. So the overall movie can also have a new subtitle instead of the final chapter. They can call this Jump Scare the Movie. Because there are so many attempts at jump scares. Basically, you're going from loud action set piece to quiet time waiting for a jump scare. That's your two modes. So if you're not in the big action scene, it's a quiet time and you're waiting for the jump scare. To the point where I'm like, all right. Oh, wait. It's settling down. We're going to have a jump scare. We're gonna... Oh, there it is. There's the jump scare. Oh. When Cinema Sins does this movie, they should just have a jump scare counter as well as the sin counter. Because there are so many goddamn jump counts. Jump scares. I mean, they can make a freaking drinking game out of the jump scares in this. It's freaking ridiculous. So getting into uh, some of the other characters, because it's not just Alice the entire time. Um, Allie Lauder returns playing Claire Renfield. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler. Sorry if it is. Um, and she does a fine job. I didn't. There wasn't a lot to talk about, so I didn't bring her up in my character thing. But there is something I did notice about her that really, really bugged me, and it's something I've never noticed in any movie ever. So, this is ten years after the apocalypse, basically. You know, we've been living, you know, on the edge of dying for ten years. Her hair looks fantastic. It is shiny and combed and perfect and just fantastic. But then they stick Ali Lauder's, you know... Claire Renfield next to people who have messed up, grungy, nasty, apocalypse hair, and Ali Lauder's hair is perfect. It's really weird. Even Mila Jolovich's hair is apocalypse looking, but hers, Ali Lauder's, is just so beautifully brushed. Like a hundred strokes between takes or something. I don't know what the deal is, but it's really noticeable, at least to me. It bugged me every time I saw her. It's like, did you find a shipment of conditioner somewhere in the apocalypse? Because your hair just looks fantastic. Now the other characters, uh, when she meets up with Allie Lauder, she gains another group of characters and they are literally a body count. I don't know if any of them had names. None of them had any attributes or characterization. They're just a body count. There's all these just nobody characters. And when they're going on their mission, they die and they do a close-up of them like you're supposed to go, Oh no! Random guy number seven! He was the most random of them all! Yeah, I don't care. Who are these people? Why do I care about these people? They're just these weird nobody characters that are just for a body count. And it's just so lazy. There is nothing to them. We're not introduced to them at all. It's just, oh, there's Claire Renfield. I know her because she's in previous movies. So we're just going to join up with her group of randos. There we go. Continuing on my nitpicking scheme. Uh, so she, Alice was told there's you know four to 5,000 people left on the earth. Uh, she was given an exact number. I don't remember what it was. But it's between four and 5,000 living humans on the earth. And then she gets caught by like a gang of people and she murders all of them. There's only 5,000 people left on the planet, Alice. And you're just going to 
kill people randomly? Stop killing people! There's not many left! Like, I know they're bad guys and beating on you and whatever. Can't you just knock them out? Do you have to murder people? Humans are a limited resource now. Stop killing people! Ugh. Moving on. Um, I won't get into specifics, but if you are a Resident Evil movie fan, I'm sure there's some out there, the continuity in this is fucked. Uh, I, I've, like I said, I've watched them all building up to this. I know them pretty well at this point. There are th nothing connects very well in this at all. I'll get some more into spoilers, but yeah, the continuity is fucked. All right, my final nitpick. I know I've been picking on this a lot, but my final nitpick. So like I said, the first two or three action scenes are fantastic, really enjoyable, awesome things to see. Then we go into the hive. And every scene in the hive is like this. And every action is like this. And we can't see what the hell's going on. It's just the worst up close, in your face, quick cut, shaky cam action scenes I have ever seen. And it's so weird coming from these awesome ones in the beginning to just right in your face. You don't know what's going on. It's just the con most confusing. You don't know what's happening. And like these are supposed to be the big scenes and they are awful. Just, just awful. I mean, worse than Batman Begins close up jump cutty shaky cam action. Worse than that. So it's time to get into some spoilers because I do have some spoilers for Resident Evil. So uh, if you want to skip my spoilers, go ahead and click the umbrella co uh, corporation icon and that will skip you to my wrap up. But we're doing spoilers from here on out. So here we go. So if you are a Resident Evil fan, you remember at the end of Retribution where it had like this big battle in DC with those weird bat things and tons of zombies and he's like this is the final battle of the world this starts the day after that battle they totally just skip over this huge battle that's what we were waiting for why did you do that I mean that's pretty much a standard of Resident Evil movies where they promise something at the end of one of the movies and just gloss over it in the next one. So I guess for uh, continuity's sake, it's still uh, what would Resident Evil do. But good lord, it, it just jumped right over that. So there's a big twist in this movie where it turns out the Umbrella Corporation meant to release this virus the whole time and it was going to be a cleansing the earth, Noah flood style thing. That doesn't line up with anything you said, and this is what I said when continuity was fucked. Because the point of the first one is the Red Queen killed everybody in the organization or in the hive because they didn't want to release the virus. They dropped a nuke on Raccoon City because they didn't want to spread the virus. In the third one, they were actively working on a cure for the virus. Why would they be doing a cure if they meant to release it all along? You pulled this out of your ass. And I know there's no planning really done with these movies. Like, there was never a setup to go this many movies in. But that just came out of nowhere and makes no sense whatsoever. It's total bullcrap. Awful. It just, it makes no sense. And again, maybe I'm thinking too far into Resident Evil, the movies, but I, I, there's a continuity. They gave us a story. You gotta follow that. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's really dumb. I don't like that twist at all. The other twist is everybody's a clone. You're a clone. I'm a clone. He's a clone. She's a clone. Everybody's a freaking clone in this. And I know clones have been like the thing for these movies ever since, what, three? And, but they've just gone too far. So like I mentioned, the doctor from the second and third one is w one of the main villains. But he died in the third one, if you know these. But they brought him back because he's a clone. Or that one was a clone. But also one of the, cl one of the guys in this one's a clone and there's like three versions of him. 
and then Alice has been a clone this whole time, and everybody's a clone. That's just lazy, and it's not surprising, and it's really dumb. Like, I know you brought up the clone thing. Drop the clone thing. The clone thing is not working. I don't know if clones are part of the video game, but if they are, why would they stick to that part and not the rest? But uh, the clone thing is really, really stupid. It really hurt the movie. It's just like, oh, well, that's a clone, too, and you're a clone, and that's a clone, and everybody's a freaking clone. It's the clone Spider-Man's clone saga in movie form. Without Spider-Man. <sighs> so while I'm in spoilers, we might as well talk about the ending. So like I said, uh, there's an antivirus that's airborne that would save the rest of humanity. Uh, but it was like that the rate of people were dying, they were all going to be dead in 48 hours. But that means as this ticking clock is going, people are dying. And so, of course, it's a ticking clock thing in an action movie, so it ends on the very last second. That means most everybody's dead and you failed. There's like 100 people left at the last second. So you still failed. And then I thought they were going to release it in like this big thing that goes in the atmosphere and covers the earth and fixes everything. No. No. No, no, no. She just uh, drops it on the ground. So, uh, say the hive where she dropped the vial was in California. If there are survivors in, let's say, Germany, that airborne virus is going to take months to years to get to them. They're still dead. So, I don't get it. They're all dead. And then, to just drive this point home, they talk about it in the final monologue, where Alice is driving her motorcycle and she's like, the T-virus traveled at the speed of technology on planes and trains and automobiles with John Goodman. But the antivirus is traveling at the speed of the wind. So, everyone's dead. Yes. I, I don't, I, I got nothing. This movie might have broken me. But it's incredibly dumb ending. It is awful. Awful ending. On top of, as most people predicted, not the final chapter. They left it open definitely for sure to ha that there could be a sequel. I'm kind of torn if we want a sequel or not because I kind of want there to be a sequel. That way we all, as everyone predicted, the final chapter thing was total bullshit. As well as I always think it's kind of funny how there's a final in a, a movie title and then they have a sequel to that. Like how the fourth movie in Friday 13th was the final Friday. And then the one coming out this year is the 13th Friday the 13th. I think that's kind of funny. But I don't want another one of these movies. And I don't know where it would go that would be any more interest. I don't think we'll get one. But uh, they definitely left it open for another final chapter. They should call it the final final chapter. So after all my nitpicking, and of course if you sat through the spoiler section, uh, you might think I'm going to totally rag on this movie, but it's Resident Evil. What, what do you expect? It's a big dumb action movie. Um, like I said, it's got some really cool action in the beginning. Uh, it's a very pretty movie to look at. Some really cool aesthetic. Um, it does, even though the continuity is really screwed up, it expands the uh, Resident Evil universe a little bit more. So it's got some pluses to it. Um, you can definitely enjoy it as a big dumb action movie. But of course, uh, if you're a stickler for continuity and things like that, it's a total mess. Um, the storyline, if you put any thought into it, completely unravels. And it's just a broken, bad movie. So I guess you can enjoy it if you're just going to shut your brain and just watch things explode. 
but don't think about it whatsoever. So that being said, my official rating on this is see it on TV. Um, if you see it on Netflix for streaming already, yeah, check it out. Um, you know, you catch it on cable one day, sure. Don't spend any money seeing this. Um, it does have the distinction of being the best uh, video game movie of 2017, so it's got that going for it. It's got no competition. And of course, since it's the first movie I've seen in 2017, it's so far the best movie I've seen in 2017. It's not going to keep that title very long. Um, but yeah, it's it's a total mess. Um, but some of the actions we're seeing. But if you're not bought into Resident Evil, this isn't going to make you buy into it. So I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, and until next time, hold on to your old slots.